come here, come here, I've got a secret. Listen to this, you're going to be able to do any yoga class you want, even if you're a beginner. So maybe you're a beginner to yoga. Lots of people have just started up a yoga practice because they've got time at home. Brilliant, I'm so pleased for you. There's going to come a time where you might want to go to a studio or maybe even there are classes online that you just want to jump into but you're not really sure if you're going to be able to cope. I've got a load of options for you to learn so that you can do any yoga class and feel like you can hold your own and get through it. There are loads of options and alternatives that beginners can take in a yoga class so they can continue to participate fully in the class but without doing themselves an injury or feeling frustrated. I'm going to run through a few of those little options now so that you can take them away and just sail through any class that you jump into. The first option I'm going to talk to you about is shoulders. So we often are quite tight in our shoulders. I don't think I realised until I had a bit of a break from my yoga practice. You come back to it and you realise that a simple instruction like raise your arms over your head is really difficult. If we've got tightness or previous injuries in the collarbones, that can be really challenging. So a couple of options for you. The first one is to cactus the arms. You're going to hear teachers say cactus the arms. What do they mean? They mean just bend the arms. Take a right angle in the elbow. You'll be in this position. And the other option is maybe your arms can straighten, but the palms don't come very close together. Occasionally, yoga teachers will ask you to put your palms over your head so your arms are straight and your palms touch. If you can't do that, it's fine for the hands to be quite far apart from each other, as long as the palms are facing each other, so you've got the correct um, turn in your arm, so the insides of your elbows should be pointing at each other. The next option I have for you is for plank. So you've probably done plank before if you're somebody that does a bit of fitness, but if you haven't, plank is that posture where your hands are below your shoulders, and your body's like a straight plank, your toes are tucked at the end, everything's hovering off the ground in one straight line. It really works your core and your arms. It can be quite tiring if you've not done a lot of yoga before. The option in plank is to take your knees to the ground. This doesn't mean that you're going to be necessarily in like a tabletop position where the knees and legs are really bent. It might be that you've just lowered the knees down slightly um, and you've still got a bit of length through the torso. The other option as well, sometimes planks really, really tough in the wrists. If you're in plank for a long time or you're doing loads of planks, you can come down onto the forearm sometimes. That gives you a little bit of a break in those wrists. But also you can bend the elbows and just uh, kind of put the weight more in your arm muscles than dumping it all into those wrist joints. Forward folds are really challenging for people who are particularly stiff in the hamstrings and the lower back. I get lots of people say to me, I can't do yoga because I can't touch my toes. Well, you can't touch your toes because you don't do yoga uh, or any stretching. But there are some options in forward folds so that you don't need to feel frustrated or, or scared or worried. The first option is to bend the knees, so you don't need to have your legs dead straight. You can have a soft bend in the knees. The most important thing is that you can feel the backs of the hamstrings, so that's like the back of your thighs lengthening, so you can feel them stretching. And you also want to feel like your back is nice and straight. So the next thing to think about in your forward folds is always just to ease off so that you're not rounding the back. There are postures where there are exceptions to that rule, where we encourage a curl to the spine. But generally speaking, when you're doing things like standing forward folds or seated forward folds, we're hinging at the hips 
and we're keeping a nice long spine. So just ease off, there's no race to get your head down to the shins or the ground or wherever your head's going. Ease off, keep a little bend in the knees. It works standing postures and seated postures. And the final option that I want to mention to you is the option that you always have in every class and that is to rest. So maybe you've jumped onto a really cool sounding yoga class and it's like rocket yoga hit shred ashtanga dynamic class. Oh, that sounds fun. And then you get halfway through and you didn't realise that your back bedroom was a hot yoga studio, but you're sweating so much that you're sliding around on your mat. We've all been there. Sometimes yoga can be quite vigorous. Um, there's such a variety of yoga styles and some of it really does, you know, get a bit of a, a bit of a dab going on. If you feel tired, lightheaded, like you're losing your energy and you're not going to make it through the class, you have the option to rest. You always have the option to rest. As long as that resting posture is uh, kind of slotted into the practice, you're taking it sparingly and it feels good for your body and you're using it to recuperate and rejoin the class, then you go for it, in my opinion, in my two pedals worth. If you're on the ground and you're doing like mat work where you're in plank or downward dog or puppy pose or something like that if you can rest in child's pose you'll become familiar with child's pose pretty quickly but it's where the toes touch the knees come out to the side you take the hands away from the body rest the forearms on the ground maybe the forehead comes to the mat child's pose is a really good one to take and a lot of teachers will clock you in child's pose and they'll they'll notice that you're resting and they shouldn't call you out on it but they might adjust the class or give you some options if they feel that it would help you the other posture that you can take if you need to rest tadasana mountain pose which is a pose that we start a lot of our grounding and standing postures from and it really is just standing with our feet normally hip width apart sometimes the feet are together Shoulders are back and down, hands are resting back down by the side of the body. You can take Tadasana if you need to. Just let the eyes close and take a few rounds of breath. Settle back into things, reconnect with what you're doing and then jump back into the class. Another way to rest in a lot of these yoga postures is if your hands are getting really tired. I know I've been in classes where I feel like I'm getting like tingling sensations in my hands because we've had our arms like up like this for ages. You can just take the hand to the hip. Just take that hand, rest it on the hip. Continue making sure that you're aligned in the right way. So maybe you're doing a chest opening with your hand like this. Just take that hand back down. Focus on the other instructions that you're getting from the teacher. So those are your options. There are actually loads of options. And a good teacher will spot that maybe you need them and offer them to you. Just give you a few little prompts. These options are going to work best if you start practicing your yoga regularly you'll really get to know your body and you'll be able to spot where you can slot these little alterations or alternatives into a class so the more yoga you do the more you understand how your body works and you can kind of jump to these alternatives and slot them in but don't let this video put you off you can always keep a curious open mind and if you jump into a crazy advanced yoga class you carry on and see how you get on you might discover something about yourself that you didn't realize you might learn a new style that really excites you so keep an open mind listen to your body and take these options you'll be able to sell through most yoga classes i reckon i hope this video was useful to you I'm going to do more little videos like this, so if you're interested, just like the video, subscribe, hit the little bell, I think, and then you'll get notifications every time I post. I teach live classes on Wednesday nights and Sunday afternoons. You'd be very welcome to join, so just check out the links in the description. Cheers, and I'll stay.